Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy Jeremy from Randolph Running Club, back again with another video. This time to talk to you about the Nike React Miler after 50 miles, right after this. That's what I want for Christmas. so much for going through that intro with me and you know that that was a run from uh, last week I was doing about seven miles in these shoes at like a nice steady pace uh, it worked out to be I think 6.92 miles at uh, 8 minute and 16 second pace per mile so nice and easy steady um, doing what I think these shoes were kind of meant to do um, but yeah you know now I'm at a point where I have uh, I think it's like 47 or 48 miles on these shoes basically at 50 miles and I feel like it's a good time to kind of give my thoughts. I've seen a ton of reviews on YouTube for these that kind of informed my decision on what I thought I was getting into and why I wanted these shoes. Um, and I found that, you know, a lot of people were kind of hating on them. So <laughs> once I saw a really good price, I just had to see for myself and see what the hype was about, see why they're kind of so polarizing and some people really are rocking with them. Some people are really uh, not enjoying the shoe at all for whatever reason. So if you've ever seen one of these reviews from my channel before, uh, you kind of know how it goes, but if this is your first time, I go through the technical specs. I talk about four really key factors. The first one is the comfort of the shoe. The second, I talk about versatility. So what types of different things can the shoe do? Or is it mainly an easy cruiser or a speed shoe or whatever? Um, I talk about the durability and kind of my predictions for the shoe based on the wear that I've um, currently seen and last but not least because everything is about this and it boils down to the money we always talk about the price and last but not least you know I give you my final thoughts would I buy it again is this a shoe that I'm, I'm rocking with still so without further ado let's talk about the technical specs so the Nike react milers they're pretty chunky <laughs> in a US men's size 9 these shoes come in at 10.7 ounces um, so not the lightest shoe uh, that is courtesy of a full length React midsole. Um, so that's Nike's React foam, uh, pretty common nowadays on their shoes. You have a 10 millimeter drop, 20 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot, and 30 millimeters of stack height in the heel. So I consider these to be a pretty maximal shoe. Um, I think that they are just about the highest stack height of any shoes that I have. So definitely was a, a big factor in me going for these in the first place and why I was even considering them um, trying to add something like that into the rotation so number one let's talk about the comfort of these shoes uh, you know if you just if you look at them they're almost like this big battleship cruiser of a shoe I mean just very plush and cushy um, the tongue is semi gusseted and it has a ton of padding no matter how tight you crank these laces down you just don't feel the laces cutting into your feet or anything of that nature which is really great um, the collar is extremely padded it's just a really built-up shoe you have this this heel clip on the back that provides a little bit of a stability element there um, full rubber and like a crash pad on the outsole there it's just it's a very built up sturdy hefty shoe and you know some people are gonna like that some people aren't um but I, one thing that i find is if you're wearing this you know there's just not a ton of ground contact feel it's a tall shoe um you know with that 30 millimeters of stack height in the heel but you know when you step into it it's just uh really plush plush is the word that i would use for this for sure you're just not going to be feeling if, you, if you're running on some kind of road that maybe has like brick or there's some kind of debris some rocks here and there you're just not going to feel it on these shoes which is great right so you know your knees at the end of a long run your feet are going to be feeling great um the the insole is actually really thick too i haven't had any problems with blisters so 
10 out of 10 for comfort on these. Great, great feeling. Um, and the lockdown is just really good too, as well. So if, if you're coming from a shoe like a Infinity React Flyknit, where you kind of thought, hey, you know, um, I just can't quite get this as tight as I want. I can't really get this around, you know, the the heel area locked down like I want. I know a lot of people complain about heel slippage with that shoe. Um, this is kind of the antithesis of that shoe in that it's the lockdown is just phenomenal. So like I said, 10 out of 10 on comfort. Now let's talk about the uh, versatility of this shoe. So <laughs> I think we've kind of addressed the big elephant in the room already. This is, this is a heavy shoe, you know, um, it's, it's big. There's a lot of cushion, uh, but at the same time, you know, it's not a shoe that you're going to for your speed sessions. It's not a shoe that you're going to to try and break your, your mile pace record or a 5K or whatever that is, or any race for that matter. But, you know, um, what it's designed for is for you to go out on that long run, which is why they actually called it uh, the React Miler. Like, if you look in the insole, it actually says Nike React Miler, trust for miles. So the whole goal of this shoe is just, you know, when you're when you're pounding out those miles week in, week out, maybe you're in a really high mileage time, you're running 50 miles a week, 60 miles a week, um, this can keep you going and keep you on your A-game without injuries or any problems like that. So I find it to be, you know, a really great shoe in that regard. But if you're doing anything where you want to pick up the pace or like an interval workout, um, you're going to be a little bit lacking. You're going to be a little bit uh, wanting to have something lighter on your feet because, you know, at 10.7 ounces for a U.S. men's size nine, this is by far the heaviest shoe that I currently have. Um, you know, it's it's kind of night and day. Like I think uh, last week I actually ran in these the day after I had ran a 12 mile run in, a, in the Hoka Rincons, which weigh like seven and a half ounces or something like that in the same size. And um, you notice those three ounces on your feet. If you're a new runner, I don't think you're going to notice it so much. Um, these will probably feel really light to you. But if, if you're a person who has a shoe rotation with some, you know, um, really light, maybe even a carbon plated racer or something, this is going to feel like a boat. <laughs> but at the same time, your feet are going to thank you when you're finished with your run. So not very versatile, but good at what they're designed for. Um, so let's let's move into the next part of this review. So we're going to talk about the durability, kind of my durability predictions for it. Um, I'll show you the outsole here. So you've got a ton of rubber. Let's wait for that. That's in focus. Okay. So you've got a ton of rubber. Kind of reminds me of the Pegasus um, line with like the crash rails and everything like that. But you see, I've got 50 miles in these and there's just really not any wear showing up. I mean, this is a shoe that I think is going to last a very, very long time. Um, we'll talk about the price in a second, but <laughs> it's a shoe that I think for, for what you're paying, even if it was at full price, right? You know, I think 130 bucks is what these retailed for um, brand new. I think you're, you're getting your money's worth um, in the sense that it is a durable shoe. The upper is really overbuilt. It just doesn't feel cheap at all. It's it, all the stitching and everything uh, is very well done. You don't see, excuse me there, you don't see any glue or anything like that, kind of like showing on the, the overlays and things like that of the upper. It just, it feels solid and sturdy. And there's really nowhere that I see on that outsole. So I think um, for me, I'm probably going to stop running in these somewhere around the 300 mile mark, but that's just kind of my personal thing. I try not to keep my shoes much past that just so that I'm making sure I'm, you know, staying injury free the best that I can. But, you know, um, this Nike uh, React midsole, I've had really good experiences with that. I have a, a pair of um, Epic React 2 fly knits that I still run in from time to time. They're kind of like my gym shoes, but if I go on vacation, those are what I run in. And they have well over 300 miles. They still feel great. To be honest with you, they, they feel almost brand new. I think it's just me and my own paranoia and kind of how older running shoes used to break down so much quicker than these some of these new foams that, um, you know, I've kind of decided to shuffle them out of my rotation. But with that being said, I think if you're a person who is really trying to, you know, get every mile that you can out of those dollars, that $130 that you spent, um, I see no reason why you couldn't take the shoe to 500, 600, 700 miles. You know, I'm sure people are going to go over a thousand if they're really, you know, trying to. But 
you will get bored with this shoe before it breaks down. So I think the durability is really high on this one. So don't let that be a factor to, to sway you from stepping into it or not. And last but not least, you know how we do on this channel. We always talk about the value. So, you know, we got to talk about the price of the shoe. So, you know, when this shoe came out, I remember kind of like midsummer, um, it was 130 bucks. Just, you know, is what it is. It was $130. And I remember seeing it and a lot of the reviewers at the time seemed like they were kind of slamming it because, you know, it's, they, they don't really understand. And I, I didn't really understand either. Nobody did, I think. But what is the purpose of this shoe in Nike's lineup? It seemed kind of like the Infinity React flying it, but not really. It kind of looks like a Pegasus, but not really. It's heavier than both of those, but the stack is kind of similar. And, you know, it's just these things, right? Like you don't really understand where it fits in. So for 130 bucks, you're like, hmm, I can get an Infinity for on sale for that same kind of price. And that shoe's an ounce lighter and arguably more stylish and things of that nature. So, you know, it, it didn't really make a ton of sense for 130 bucks, but time has been kind to us. We love depreciation. We love when Nike has sales. And right now, this is a shoe that you can easily grab anytime, anywhere for under 100 bucks. I got th this particular pair that I have um, during Black Friday from Dick's Sporting Goods. They had like a 25% off sale on top of any items that were you know, already on sale as well. So I think I paid with tax, with shipping, everything like 60 bucks, which to me, $60 for something with this much impact protection, this much just plush, nice, soft foam. Um, you just, you, you really can't beat that. I don't think I've, I've seen another pair of shoes, um, around that price point that I would really compare these two and say, oh yeah, that's by far a better shoe. It's a better deal. Now, once we start getting up to like a hundred bucks or something, now I think you're in dangerous territory where there's some other shoes that are a little bit nicer than this, but like I'm saying for 60 bucks and I've seen them lower than that. I, I think if you go to like a Nike outlet right now, um, you can probably get these in the fifties or even like upper $40 range, potentially depending what size shoe you wear. So I think the value is phenomenal and, uh, really something that swayed me into stepping into these in the first place. So with all that being said, would I buy these again? Who do I think these are best for? Um, what, just what, what are my thoughts on the shoe overall, right? Kind of the synopsis. Um, would I buy these again? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> 110% I would buy these again. Um, I think the shoe's very comfortable. I think it's great for its intended purpose, which is just so you can have miles and miles and miles racked up. Um, I just took these on a two hour, like kind of steady state long run yesterday, actually. Uh, it worked out to be like 14 miles at like an 820 something pace, 827 or something like that. And um, man, when I finished that run, my feet felt so good. Like my knees didn't ache or anything like that. Uh, I had didn't have any blisters and granted I, I've worn a nice pair of socks, but I've worn those same pair of socks with Hoka Rincons and stuff of that nature before and had, you know, blisters on my toes at the end. So I think if you are using this for its design purpose, totally makes sense. Um, if you're a person who needs like a touch of stability, just a little light bit of stability, this makes sense as well. Um, I just, I don't think you can go wrong there. So um, I guess <laughs> stuff is to say, I think they're really comfortable. I think it's a good value. And I think that if you're, especially if you're a person like a new runner and you just want one shoe and you're not necessarily trying to eke out that last little percentage of performance where you really need a, that lightweight shoe, I think that this makes a ton of sense. And even for somebody seasoned, if you just have like a three or four shoe rotation and you want to have, you know, a heavier shoe for just soaking up those miles and taking your easy days, um, I, I think you can't go wrong here for this price. So those are my thoughts, guys. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to you know hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I'll have a ton more videos coming out um, similar to this one and some other things that you can see, some running motivation and just workout uh, type of videos. So yeah. And also, you know, feel free to drop a comment as well. I'm very active in the comment section. I love to have conversations with you guys and see what shoes you're running in, what kind of training you're doing. Um, but yeah, with that being said, as always, stay blessed, inspire others, stay safe out there, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.